this afternoon, and uh, we're going to talk about what's our headache for all uh, marketing people and for our customers, how to create content that deliver a value. Okay, this is the most, uh, I would say, difficult thing since there's so much content all in, the, in the net, there's so much content being delivered and produced. And so, not only having good content, but com content that converts and that's effective in our objectives is something that we should be aware of and we should try to just, you know, untangle and, 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 and focus. So, uh, I don't know, first of all, so uh, what's, uh, can you just say what you're doing in each one of your companies so people know? Uh, Laura, for instance. So I am from Plum Guide, and I head the business development vertical. Um, so I work with a lot of professional hosts, some of you present here. And uh, yeah, we, we sort of like set the strategy of, of expansion of Plum Guide, et cetera. So happy to be here with all of you today. Okay. I'm Paola Lazzaretti. I'm senior sales manager for uh, uh, the South of Europe markets. So my team uh, is in charge of the optimization and long-term relationship with uh, property managers. And also happy to be here. Nice to see you, everyone. Uh, I'm Noemi, and I'm team lead at Beyond Pricing. What we do with my team is to consult property managers to help them understand the trends in the market, so the search trends and the demand trends, so that you guys can create the best pricing strategy and marketing strategy, and um, convert more and generate more revenue. Okay, so um, having mm, content that converts means that you know your audience, that you know what motivates them, what drives them to kind of act and book. Um, what, what do you think that's uh, the balance between showing nice properties and delivering some sort of a content that goes, that touches their heart, that touches their, uh, uh, of what they really are looking for? Um, anyone, you, Noemi, maybe? Yeah, I can go first. Um, first of all, the most important thing is that some content that could be very, very um, catchy for someone might not be for someone else. So the first question is, who is your customer? Who is your target market? And what are they looking for? And the answer, most of the time, is not a room where to sleep. What they are looking for is an experience. So when you exit this room, if you go to the right and you look at the verbal screen, you'll see what your customers are looking for an experience, but that experience is different for each kind of target market. So the first big step is just to say, okay, who is my target market? What really makes people decide to come to my specific apartment? And that was what the first step we need to take when we create content. So just look at your listing and say, okay, what's different from the competition? What really makes them feel like they want to book, they want to come, and they want to have this great experience? And then play with that strength. Just use it in the title and make sure that your pictures tell that story and that in the content, all these details are, are making them feel like they want to stay at your place. Yeah, my recommendation would be, uh, we speak with, with a lot of partners and uh, I think it's common that after COVID, uh, we see that the traveler is much more emotional. We already know that our sector is really emotional and so we see that the traveler is looking for something in line with their values. And so this is something that is really, that is really changing. And uh, related to what Noemi was saying, I would encourage everyone to think about a house, not even a property manager company, but a single house as a product or as a shop. So I always say that uh, I can have an amazing shop with great products, but if I don't sell them with my window, no one is gonna enter. And so the listing is the window, and uh, uh, it's also difficult to stand out because there's a lot of competition, so it's a very crowded uh, uh, street. And what uh, worked some years ago, after COVID is not working anymore, many things are working, but standing out now, it's extremely different. It's much more difficult than 10 years ago, five years ago. And so I would also say like, uh, you have to have a clear strategy in mind with uh, having a clear branding proposition, uh, understanding who is the traveler you want to attract. Obviously, if you work with an OTA, you can also have travelers not in, in scope, but you have to have a clear idea and know your, your client. So my suggestion is also to have access to a lot of data. Uh, Noemi knows much more than me on this, but for example, in, in Expedia, my company, we, we have a lot of researches. So it's not just single data trend, but also researching on what traveler wants. We have a lot of data, not just my company, many companies. So, so it's just be curious and 
get as many insights and ideas as possible. So I think oh, this is crucial. Fantastic. Laura, you, you, your, your example is a little bit different, so your case is a little bit different, no? Uh, different in the sense that you use a lot of data, you, you, you also uh, modulate that data, right? And uh, yeah. How, what would be your so, for example, we change the content in our listing because for us, yeah, a content that converts, as they were saying, is very, very difficult nowadays and you really need to stand out. And we need to rethink who our guest is and think about all of us are guests too. And we're dealing with a type of guest that is a lot more experience in travel. Travel is more accessible for everybody now. Travel is more... Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's there for everybody, everybody can do it. So that means that people get more experience and that makes that people get more picky and, that, and you know, they know what they want and they know what they don't want. So a listing that has um, a description like this big and that uh, you know, sort of like follows the rules that we put 10 years ago doesn't convert nowadays. So what we do is to tend to uh, linking what both of you, with what both of you have said about the experience, the emotions, etc. That's what you need to try and translate and put on a listing. And you can do that in many different ways. But, for example, something that really works with us uh, is uh, instead of having a description like this big, make sure that you uh, feature the, 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 the key features of, of the property. Like, what is really standing out from the property? Is the building from the 18th century? Is, does it have an incredible swimming pool? Um, does it have like incredible like big windows and it's super bright inside? Make sure that you put that in a very visual and short way because we all know that people have less time to, you know, spend on scrolling and stuff like that. Um, we also uh, focus on giving a link uh, to what they said. It's all about the experience. So people want to know about um, what's around them. Restaurants. I know that most of you like include that in like a, maybe like a pamphlet or a book inside the house, but don't let them discover that when they check in. Tell them in advance. Tell them on the listing. Already like you know, anticipate their needs and, and fulfill them. And then uh, the most important thing for us, and I think that for everybody, is uh, transparency. Everybody wants transparency. The guest wants not to be lied to. Um, and uh, for example, we had home truths about what they need to know about the house. So a villa in Mallorca that it's like a little bit in, a, in the middle of nowhere, if there is not a road to actually get there, we make sure that we put, hey, if you're gonna hire a car, take into consideration that the road is gonna be a little bit bumpy. Or a home in Santorini, hey, there's no lift, you're gonna have to climb about 100 stairs before you come into the house. So that not only you, you gain their trust before they even book because you've been super transparent, but also that avoids you to have potential negative reviews after that. So for us, content that converts means really tangible things that you can actually do in your listing nowadays. Okay. Uh, Paula, it, it, if we had, you had to illustrate it, all this with some examples, is there any examples that you can give that you know from your uh, listings? Uh, yes, for example, some of the uh, main uh, trends, I mean, in the COVID period, you remember we spoke a lot about the flexication, so people going to work in the property, it's still something that is happening, maybe it's not that new, so we give it for, uh, like, fixing, but now we see a lot of uh, um, uh, people care a lot about the sustainability and inclusion matters, we hear a lot about them, just to give you a data, because sometimes, I spoke to some property manager and they say like, yeah, sustainability isn't really just a um, thing that yeah, everyone wants, but it's not real. A data that really impressed me is in our company, we saw the word sustainability doubled in reviews from one year to another. So it is real and it's also helping reviews. So just to give you an example of how impactful it is, um, uh, there are many ways where sustainability, for example, can be shown. It's not just the bulb or the, the the bean or things like this. There, we, we also had a survey that said that a lot of uh, sustainability matters have to do something with the local community. So people want to travel and leave the local culture. So I really encourage everyone, I think that the most emotional moment of, uh, of the traveler journey is the check-in. 
And, uh, and I think that there are many things that could be done there. So like, for example, uh, preparing a welcome gift with local products, supporting a local uh, uh, production, or like uh, arranging a tour to a local uh, uh, industry there. But it's also important to show it before. As she was saying, I, it's amazing that it's there, but maybe just leaving something as a surprise for the end. But that's amazing also to show, like a picture. Hey, if you come here, you are living the experience of the area. So that's an amazing thing. And for example, talking about inclusion, uh, inclusion and diversity, uh, we are also moving a lot in terms of uh, um, features in our in our website uh, to to work with filters and guarantee a good experience also on this. But for example, there can be a property with uh, the filter of like the, that is accessible uh, to wheelchair, but maybe the pictures are not showing anything. So I, I don't see exactly, for example, closing to, close to the bed, if this is big enough to have a wheelchair. So really caring about everything, all these details, I think they are, ones that they are the ones that make a difference. So it's, there are little things that help stand out because on the other side, many things are the same. I mean, I don't want to speak about flexibility of cancellation policy or pricing because it should be already, it's already asked and we know it and it's a standard thing. So how do you make something creative? to attract the child. Right, and from the pricing uh, you know, uh, angle, as it, what is there that we could just know how can pricing affect the perception and the, uh, you know, the effect of uh, content to, to uh, the property managers? I think this is extremely important and sometimes even for, for a property manager it's hard to understand what is the perceived value of your property. And this value actually changes in time, depending on new trends, or also maybe the reviews that are already on channels. So sometimes the price can really fluctuate for the same property, not only depending on the period of the year. Of course, the seasonality has a big impact, but apart from that, sometimes the way you create your marketing, you present your product, helps you to elevate the value of your property. And then, of course, don't take me wrong, there is a limit, right? It is also important to be honest in what you present, because at the end of the day, even if you manage to sell it at a very high price, then the moment of truth comes when people are checking in, and the review will say the truth. So it's very important to stay true to what you know is the value of your property, but being aware that that value could change accordingly to the marketing you do for the property, how you present it, and also the review is extremely important. Okay. Now, we're also learning lately pretty much about uh, AI, and uh, I know that Laura has uh, you know, some uh, focus. The one that shall not be named, <laughs> AI, <laughs> nowadays. So how, how, is that, how does that affect, and how, do you have examples of, of um, content that converts yeah. from me, an AI perspective? Yeah. So we use, we use AI obviously like at a really basic level, but AI, as everybody has been hearing today and for many days I'm, I'm assuming, um, it is here to stay and, and we need to adapt, right? Like it's the same happened when everything changed from desktop to mobile, like this is going to be one of those changes. Um, and it's not fully developed or not as accessible yet, but there, there are free applications that property managers can use to improve their content. And when I say improve their content is create better listings, better descriptions, better content itself, but also save a little bit of time. Because you can use a tool that does it for you and the human just reviews it rather than create it from the, from the get-go. So at Plum Guide, we do that with our listings. We run an AI machine and we, for example, I don't know, you can even put something like, write this with a condensed tone mm -hmm. and the AI produces it for you and then you review it, tweak it and change it. So we use that for our descriptions a lot for um, our, we name our properties in a different way. We try to stay away from gener generic terms of, uh, I don't know, amazing to bedroom, sea view, blah, blah, blah. Like that doesn't say anything anymore. People don't correlate with that. That content doesn't convert, mm -hmm. but we need to go back to the experience and be like, okay, instead of calling it that, call it ocean dreams. And you have their attention at least, and then whatever you do with the rest of the listing will keep them and convert or not. But yeah, there are real-time applications that 
are accessible for everybody here today that uh, on AI that can help create better content. And we use them on a daily basis and our listings convert really, really well. Like there is actually like at 99.9% .9 like of uh, accuracy versus what our merchandising team were doing from the beginning. So it's really, really good. Yeah, and it's very inter interesting because at the end of the day, you also uh, applying machine learning and with all Correct. the information that you're inputting in the artificial intelligence. It will, as long as you make it good to the description and you just amplify that description, go to you just give it more insights, it will give you better answers. It's also about the way you ask the questions of why you ask to the artificial intelligence that it will give you a better uh, fitting to your customer persona, kind of for those who are not uh, familiar with Condé Nast, it's a publisher, it's a publisher, co publishing company, okay, so uh, that has a specific tone uh, voice and uh, it's uh, it addressed to a particular type of, of a customer. So having said this, okay, we want effect effectiveness, okay? When we talk about effectiveness, you mentioned time saving, okay, that's great, okay, that's, uh, we all want to, to be more productive with our time, with our limited time. Um, what, what metrics do you have for, you know, once you decide what your audience is, what drives them to consume and to book, uh, when you define your, cust your guest persona and so on and so forth, what are the metrics that you would recommend or there's, are there any examples, any things, any cases, success cases that you've seen in, 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 in your companies that you can share with us? Yeah, so um, what I think um, it's important is to think that when you're creating a marketing strategy, there is a long journey from the first touch point with your potential customer to get them to actually click that book button, right? And if you're talking about your website and you're trying to drive more visibility to the website at the end of the day, convert these lookers into bookers, it's not as easy as launch a campaign and expect revenue to be generated. Every single action and marketing uh, content that you produce will have a specific goal, a call to action, and it needs to be measurable. You need to understand before creating that, what's your goal. And it can be even just to get more followers on Instagram, for example, or get customers that you already have in your database to subscribe to your blog. And then, of course, ultimately, what we want is, for example, to convert. So maybe if you do a last minute discount and you publish it on social medias, of course, the final result is for those people to book the available nights that you have left short term. So there is always a strategy with a goal. And then you will need to understand what is, what is the metric that um, will, will make you understand if you are successful. For example, it can be the number of followers has grown. I'll make you a very real example. Last week I've been in Italy and I've been to Florence and a fellow property manager has some properties with a nice view on the Duomo. So they, they were telling me about the strategy they created on Instagram. Basically what they did is just to focus everything on this beautiful window and terrace that they have on the Duomo. So they started creating amazing content. They started playing with tags on Instagram. They asked people staying to just tag the, the property so that they could get more visibility. And, and then, of course, they also did targeted um, approach on, on LinkedIn, on, um, on Instagram specifically for their target market. And they managed to duplicate the followers that they had in a couple of weeks. So the idea here is really to first set a goal and then understand how you get there. Sometimes you won't get there. That's not a problem. You need to reiterate, use the data, understand how you can do it better, what did go wrong, maybe change channel, maybe change slightly the target or the tone that you're using until you get there. All right. How are you? Uh, so I will continue, uh, I agree with this, but I'm going to move into my uh, parallelism with uh, considering a house as a product to mm -hmm. sell. And I can make the example of uh, Nike shoes. Uh, they don't have one channel, marketing channel. They have thousands of marketing channels. Could be guerrilla marketing, could be their own website, could be uh, Amazon, could be everything. And so I would say super important also, uh, as Noemi said, like knowing 
And setting a clear goal will help to understand which channels are the right ones. Because it's not all channels, it's not one channel. It's understanding the right channel depending on the type of travel I want, depending on the goal that I want. And this changes everything. And also the effort that you put into different channels. So I'm considering, I'm talking, I'm representing OTA obviously here today. And I recommend to see the OTA as a marketing channel. It's also a selling a, a, a platform, obviously, but uh, it's a marketing channel which has the value of uh, bringing leads. So I'm bringing you a lead which, is, which requires no investment, apart from time, because I said before, data has to be studied. This is the only investment I would consider, but there's a lead there. So what do you do when I send you a person there? Uh, so the, the way to, to check the, the result of a campaign, yes, could be, uh, Revenue could be conversion, obviously, but there are many other factors there. It could be that my region is having a boom of demand. So I would say to just focus on this side. So how can I get new clients using the OTA as a lead generation platform, as a marketing uh, platform? So which actions can I do in order to retain these customers? We saw today how important is the loyalty programs. Uh, so loyalty programs could be done very easily, very simple things that could help repeating these customers, for example, an example, we have a lot of German travelers uh, from our website and we hear feedback that they tend to repeat because maybe we were also close from Italy, it's easier to repeat, or they could recommend the company to another person, they could leave uh, a review if they have some incentive, they could leave a like in the, in the pages. So there are many things that could be done. So my recommendation is all the benefits there are all around, just try to get the best, so squeeze everything that you can do. Like another thing, uh, sometimes it's like, how can I showcase, how can I sell my product? I'm a big fan of personal branding in general, I work a lot with this with my team, and I think culturally, in, at least in South of Europe, we tend not, not to maybe showcase that much what we have at the personal side, but I also think sometimes it happens for products, so why don't we go and, because re bad reviews, yes, we work a lot on them, oh my god, I need to change this, but what about the positive ones? So if I see three positive reviews talking about the view from a, that could be an idea, for example, for a title. So also taking care of this, just give ourselves a bit of, a, yourself a bit of applause because there are many things that could, there are good and maybe are not seen. So it's, uh, there are many things. We just have half an hour, but I would love to stay here talking one hour, but uh, it's, uh, it's very creative. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Laura, uh, from your point of view. I agree with everything that they said, and, and I think that um, having your objective very clear from the beginning sounds like a basic thing, like duh, but it's actually very difficult to sit down and be like, okay, this is what we actually want. It's, uh, for us, it's very important to set up our KPIs first and then work backwards. It's like, okay, we want to get here, this is how we're going to do it. Um, and it's very important to know who you are as a company, to have a very clear identity of like what product do you represent and who is your target audience. And again, touching base on what they said, there's different channels for different time of the year, for different types of campaign, for different types of, object of objective. If you have a demographic that is 45 years and up and older, like perhaps don't choose TikTok and Snapchat and things like that as your channel. Maybe go for Instagram or for like old newsletters or like, you know, that's, you just need to know exactly what you want to do. If you want to acquire new customers, you will choose a different channel and a different strategy that if you want to retain customers. If you want to generate a lot of last minute bookings because you have a lot of, uh, your occupancy is not as high as you would like, then use an OTA to try and do that and, uh, you know, get those... Yeah, KPAs also from. may vary from exactly. moment to moment and from channel to channel. So, it sounds really basic, but mm -hmm. it's really not. It's very complicated to, you know, simplicity is genius at the end of the day, and it's quite hard to... No, and this is a, we are on a dynamic market, right? So, uh, now we uh, have just five minutes to, to go, and we I'd like to have some questions from the public as well, but as a last thing, uh, what would you just summarize as the trends or can you see some trends coming up regarding uh, content that, that would be effective for conversion? Um, I think, as we were saying before, it's all about personalization. It's all about the experience. It's about connecting emotionally with, uh, with the guests. So trying to recreate that and adapt that and show that in your listing it's going to be your key 
setting strategy. That's how you're gonna get them to, to convert. Um, and in terms of trends on the industry and uh, aligning with this personalization, I think that what we're gonna be seeing uh, in the future slowly is the way the people search and how we are going to have to adapt to that is gonna be completely different. There's not gonna be just, I want Mallorca six bedrooms. It's gonna be like, okay, I would like a villa with an outside swimming pool, three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and then the platform or it's going to give me results instead of me having to, book, uh, to look for the results. Mm -hmm. That's something that we are seeing internally now from some of the requests that we're getting from guests. They have the capability to book directly, but we get the request like that, and I think that that's going to be something that all of us are going to have to implement at some point. From Verbal. Uh, so my suggestion is branding, 100%, and as she said before, it's not just branding your company. Nike does a completely different branding strategy for shoes or the running thing, so it's difficult, I know, but it has to be done by property. It has a bit of difficulty. And then, yes, the trend I'm seeing is that we are seeing from, from my company is that the traveler is much, much more uh, exigente, how do you say it? Like, yeah, demanding. Yeah, demanding. And, uh, demanding and much more emotional, so it's, it's difficult. I'm not saying it easy. it's easy, but at least be ready, studying everything that happens all around, and also noticing, because it's also a matter of intuition. So right. data and intuition. <laughs> I'm a very big fan of data, so my answer is that the trends might be very different for two different target markets, and they might be one trend today and start slowly to change for tomorrow. So what is very important is to try and predict what is going to be important in the future. So just always keep an eye on what is converting, what gives you the best results, and then individuate those trending and make sure that you reiterate your strategy and you keep changing. That's what brings you yeah, success on the long term. On top of what you're saying, let me just say just a, an insight. I, I've been in fashion for many, many years and, uh, and we talked about trends forever. And I would say that my suggestion, and this is also for fashion, is to bet for just one unique selling proposition, what you believe you're good at, you, what you believe you, you can deliver in the, in the, the customer that you want, the, the, the guest that you want, and go, just no matter what the trends are, just bet on that and continue just uh, deep inside. Um, any, uh, I'd like to open up uh, the, the Q&A for, for people here. Um, is there any particular, I mean, we're not gonna solve the content, the effective content, uh, uh, you know, uh, challenge in half an hour. Uh, but if you have any particular question you just wanna, you're curious about, we'll be happy to try to, an to answer. Hi. Oh, cool. Got one there. Sorry, second. Yeah, we we'll go. We'll pass it over. I, sorry. So we'll go. Uh, go for yeah. it. Hello, uh, I'm Teo, Sejo Maroc and Abalia.com. Uh, we have mostly villas in Marrakesh. Mm -hmm. uh, really beautiful villas, luxury, and uh, most of our customer uh, they do not share. They do not review. Uh, the week at our places is between ten thousand and forty thousand euros. Uh, what would you recommend with your experience to create content, to generate word of mouth without data, without being able to measuring it, without, for all that word that do not speak, do not play online, do not post online, uh, what would you recommend for our kind of business? May I? Probably you. Know, I mean, Marrakesh. I, I've been in Morocco. I lived in Morocco. Never went to Marrakesh, though. But what, from what I know from Marrakesh is that it's got it's a special spirit and ambience and, 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 and you know, st lifestyle. And, uh, you know, if, I, if you had to ask me what to sell about your properties and your destinations in Marrakesh, I would probably focus on that particular singular culture that they do have there and that uh, might be very appealing to many people that probably they'll trust just the branding of Marrakesh by itself, um, you know, beyond what you can show them as a particular property. I'm sure that the, 
their expectations will go on online or uh, align, but rather with what Marrakesh branding is. Uh, and probably I would create content about that, you know. Uh, but I don't know if you have a, diff a different. I mean, I, uh, this is just a personal thing. If I'm asked to do something, sometimes it happens to me, I go to a restaurant and they say, could you please leave a review? It's like, no, I wanted to leave it, but now I'm not gonna, I mean, I think it's just, just a bit too much. So I think personally that doing something that is really remarkable will transform into a review. I'm not saying it easy, uh, but it really happened to me many times. I'm talking as a traveler now because it's a very, there's no secret way to do this. So. I was treated so well, or I had so, uh, such an amazing gift that was unique that I was really uh, keen to, to leave a review. Then it's also important from our side to review the traveler, which is something that helps moving a bit the, the thing, but in general, I think it's really guaranteeing the best experience that they can. And obviously it's not automatic. Uh, if you're fine with asking, it also could be fine. This is just my opinion, but, but uh, I saw you're nothing, so maybe I'm not, I'm not the only one. But uh, I would say just doing something extremely creative, even not without investing much, but it's remarkable and will remain into, into this. And, and if it's not a review, at least doing some loyalty program as a referral program, it still helps to have some, it doesn't transform into a review, but it helps. Good. Well. Uh, we'll answer some questions there. We are out of time. So, uh, unfortunately, we are out of time, but Simon will kill me if we just uh, close it, but we can answer afterwards. Thank you, uh, Laura. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Noemi, um, Plum Guy, Virgo, and beyond. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>